morning, APU. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Listen, there are a few of us, but he's still so deserving of our worship. Real quick, can you guys stand up for me, please? Stand up, stand up. I know we're coming back from spring break, and I don't know about you guys, but this time is usually when all my assignments pick up. Um, I have a bunch of quizzes, midterms. Um, I'm always stressed and anxious around this time. Uh, but what an opportunity to, to tap into the power that our big father has for us. Um, we serve a big God. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, we serve a big God? We serve a big God. Turn to your other neighbor and say, we serve a big God. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's worship. Put your hands together.
come on, we serve a big and mighty God and there is nothing too hard for Him. So this morning, I wanna encourage you to lift your hands and worship Him. Whatever it is that you're believing for today, it is done in Jesus' name. There is nothing too big for Him. There is nothing too small for Him. So whatever it is that you need, it is found in Jesus and it's already done, amen? We worship you, Lord. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. Yeah. We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tide will never change And they haven't seen what you can do There is power in your name So much power in your name Come on, declare this Move the immovable Break the unbreakable
you're believing for. It is done. Cause you said, if you said it, it's done.
to come together and to sing to you. Father, I ask as this chapel service continues, that your Holy Spirit continues to move, um, that you allow us to take in your word that you're going to um, have Keith Hall bring to us, Lord, that we're able to learn from it, to carry it out. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for meeting us here in this moment. In your son's name, amen. Good. good morning. Come on. Good morning. Yay. It is so good to see all of you here in person. And for those of you who are watching online, um, just a little reminder. Uh, we will be going into more of in-person chapel. And we want to encourage all of you to be here Hence, we are no longer going to have the Monday, Wednesday chapel um, accessible virtually. So there's no Tuesday, Thursday option for you. So if you are in need of being, um, receiving an exemption form from being in person, then you have to file a petition form which will be sent to you again um, later on this afternoon so that you could um, apply and hopefully um, we will see you here more than virtually uh, moving forward. One thing I wanted to say was this week I was actually talking to a group of students and I asked them, so are you ready for the rest of the semester? And they're like, yeah, we got six more weeks of school. That's what one group of students said. Another group of students said we have eight. So there's a discrepancy there. So I wanted to make it straight for you. Uh, you have, after this week, you have six weeks of instructions and finals, which means seniors, you are graduating soon. Okay, um, which is exciting. I see some of you and you are freaking out. Some of you are not clapping because you're probably freaking out. You're graduating. Um, so which means our time is limited to be together in person, to worship together. So please, please take the opportunity to be um, in this setting so that we could truly enjoy our community together. Today's speaker is not a stranger to us at all. Um, Dr. Keith Hall loves you. He loves being with our students, and he is a gifted and talented speaker, and I am so excited that I get to invite him onto the stage so that he could share with all of you. And so open your hearts and be ready because God will speak through him today. What's up, APU? Come on, y'all make some noise. 
wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. We are in this space together, and uh, man, y'all are singing so good this morning. Can you make some noise for the Lord? It's great to see all of you this morning. So listen, you got to bear with me. Uh, this is just in my blood, and this is the way that I was, I was raised, but I, I've got to extend some acknowledgments. Hey, can we thank the Lord for Dr. Sheno Simons and her leadership of Student Affairs? Come on. Yeah. Grateful for you. Hey, we want to acknowledge our, our corporate worship team, our spiritual life team. Can y'all just take a stand real quickly? Can we show our love to them too? Yeah, take a stand. Yeah. That's it. And look, I would be remiss. Man, the worship leaders, we're really blessed. I've been to some campuses. I mean, we, we know the Lord accepts a joyful noise. <laughs> and we thank the Lord for that. But we have worship leaders and performers that take us to a heightened level of excellence in terms of our worship. Can all of you take a stand? Can we show them some major love? Come on. Yeah. Yes. Yes, indeed. Look, they have a heart for the Lord, and man, they share their gifts liberally with us week after week. And then they're good looking too. I mean, they stylish. Look at them wearing Chuck Taylors and my brother on the keys even got the Jordan 3's on. I'm like, man, what size you wear? No, we're going to talk afterwards. All right. And it's great to be in your company. What a beautiful, what a beautiful student body that we have here at APU. Listen, I have so much respect um, for all of you because the past couple of years have really been tough. And you've had to demonstrate adaptability, resilience. You know, some of us, we've lost loved ones and some members of this community, some who are part of our family, and you have continued to lean into your faith and to be present. And it's a testament, yes, of your faith, but it's also a testament of God's faithfulness. Can I get an amen from the student body? Hey, let's just give God praise for his for his faithfulness. Man, six weeks left. Seniors, don't you want to stay longer? We don't, okay, no, okay, thank Well, I guess you should be honest in chapel, yeah. So thank you for being very explicit about that. Well, look, we will miss you, all right? We'll go on with your bad self then, all right? But listen, seniors, thank you so much for the way that you've enriched our community. Listen, so many of you, you're not here just for the academic experience. I know that's central, but many of you, you have devoted time, energy to invest in the lives of others who are part of this community. You've served as RAs and alpha leaders and, and uh, club org leaders and any other kind of leader. You've been on mission trips, and so you need to be commended uh, for your commitment to service. I think many of you know this. One of our institutional values here is a at APU is service. Man, when we understand how God has transformed our lives and how he has renewed us, how he has redeemed us, we are compelled to share that with others, whether that's verbally, whether that's through action in our service, and you know you are a testament of that, and so we are so grateful, grateful for you. So listen, I'm not going to talk long. Some of you are looking like, okay, a, a, a brother with a mic saying he's not going to talk long. I mean, you, we know better than that. Even Pastor Tatiana, I said, now what time am I supposed to stop again? She said 11.15. I said, I know it's 11.20. There you go. I need every minute. No, but listen, I would love for us to seize this as an opportunity to think of ways. I know you're already having an impact, um, but I do understand that many of our students juggle a lot. Like I see a couple of you already yawning. You know, we just got back from the mid-semester break, but it, do I have any students that can be real and say, I'm still tired? Anybody like still tired? Can I see your hand? Just raise it high. Just don't, don't, just be real about it. That, that, that's, that. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little tired too. 
I, I still have joy. I still have energy. I still have vigor. I still have good looks. But, but I... <laughs> Okay, some of you laughed a little too hard on that one, all right? <laughs> Calm down now, especially if you're toward the front row. I can see you, all right? <laughs> but, but I want us to think of practices that we can embody that Jesus demonstrated uh, in the Gospels. Hey, the Gospels are in the Old or New Testament? New, New Testament. And I'll ask you questions just to make sure you're awake. Now, if you're a senior and you didn't know that, you need to come back for another couple of years, all right? Yeah, yeah, the Gospels... Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's, a, it's this documented account of, of the, the birth, the life, the ministry, the death, the resurrection of Christ. And so some very powerful, practical, um, spiritual strategies for our consideration. Today, I just want to highlight three. Okay, I want to highlight three, and I hope you can stay awake the entire time, okay? But, but this is one thing I need for you to do, just to, to support the rhythm of this message. When I say, let's go back, I want you to say, where? Let's try it. Let's go back. Where? That was good. That was pretty good. I think we can take our energy and attitude to another level, though. Let's go back. Where? Yeah. Hey, hey, by the way, let me hit the pause button. Students who are joining us virtually... We thank you for joining us virtually. But listen, you are missing out. You want to be in this space. Can I get an amen for those who are here? I mean, the ambiance is completely different. It cannot be replicated through the virtual medium. And you heard from Dr. Simons, they shutting that down. So come on, come on in here. Come on. <laughs> Come on in. And, and listen, when you come, you add more energy and, and enthusiasm, and it's even greater praise. Listen, even if you can't sing good, that's all right. Again, God loves a joyful noise. We appreciate it, all right? All right, as long as you're not on the mic, we're good. So, listen, I want us to go back and grasp. Oh, yeah, so y'all good. A few thoughts that we can glean from, from the Lord. So let's go back to the Garden of Gethsemane. Hey, have any of you seen the Southwest commercials, Gotta Get Away? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Joseph. <laughs> I know one person is awake, and Joseph got caught in the mix, right? He was expecting everybody else to say, yeah, we've been on that rhythm. And he's like, okay, I'm the only one, all right. I appreciate you for trekking with me, man. That's good. But listen, Jesus had moments when he carved out time of solitude. I know that our students are extremely busy, heavily engaged with good work. Many of you are juggling academic demand, relational demands, Anybody working part-time? Any, any students working part-time? Some of you may even be working full-time. Some of you have familial responsibilities. You're juggling all those things, and it's easy to move to the point of exhaustion. What I really want to share with everybody today is that it's so critical, and I would even say that it's spiritual and godly for us to carve out times of solitude. You just can't keep going and going and going. You run out of steam. And all of us, we need spiritual refreshment. Jesus knew that even in his humanity, when it came to the ministry that was on this earth, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, we're familiar with this. He felt that his ministry was culminating. He knew that the betrayal and the death on the cross was approaching. And so Jesus left Peter, James, and John, and he retreated deeply into the garden. This is what Mark shares in, in chapter 14, verse, verses 35 and 36. And he fell on the ground and he prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father... All things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. So we see this poignant moment where Jesus, who is the Messiah, the Son of God, but wrapped in flesh, experienced the human condition like many of us. 
He's going through a time of distress, even emotional pain, considering what's about to happen. And he finds a solitude place to do what? To pray. Now, I know some of you, when you hear pray, prayer, you're like, okay, that, that is so cliche. Listen, I think the way that we reference prayer is inaccurate. Sometimes we reference pr prayer as the, it's, it's the last thing or the least thing that I can do. But prayer is actually one of the most powerful privileges and weapons that we have at our disposal. Everybody shout prayer. prayer. Come on, say it with some energy. Shout prayer. prayer. It's nothing like having a direct line to God the Father. I want you to hear this. This is a quote from Lisa Turk, uh, Kirst. The reality is my prayers don't change God. But I'm convinced prayer changes me. Praying boldly boots me out of that stale place of religious habit into authentic connection with God himself. Isn't that a great thought? This is from Billy Graham, the evangelist. We are to pray in times of adversity lest we become faithless and unbelieving. We are to pray in times of prosperity lest we become boastful and proud. We are to pray in times of danger lest we become fearful and doubting. We are to pray in times of security lest we become self-sufficient. So one thing I really want to encourage you to do, some of you may already be practicing this, but you really need a chill spot. There are certain places on campus where you can go and you can have the time of your life with the Lord. For some people, it's Wynn Amphitheater. Has anybody been over at Wynn like in the afternoon when the weather's good, you lay in the grass? I see some heads nodding. Yeah, you have a vanilla latte. You're good. <laughs> Just me and the Lord. This is what I need, right? Yeah, for some of you, it's literally walking the track. You know, some of our... Our, our leaders in the past, you know, Dr. John Wallace, Terry Franson, if you ever spent time with them, they will walk the track with you. Now, I will say sometimes that's problematic for me because sometimes we have some of our student athletes over there, like the, the, the track runners, and they got their shirts off, the guys, and they look all cut and build. And I'm like, I, I'm trying to walk up right so I at least look muscular or something, right? But there are places, for some of you, it may be the prayer wall over on West Campus in Kresge Plaza. Yeah, all of us, we have different, for some of you, it's literally your, literally your dorm room. Maybe it's getting up a little bit earlier just so that you can have some meaningful time with the Lord, especially considering the distress that we've been experiencing over the past couple of years. It sets a tone. It rejuvenates our faith. It reminds us that we are not alone and that God is with us. Okay, let me add something else beyond prayer because prayer is important. Everybody say prayer. prayer. Now, I got to be really, really deep with you. Okay? Along with solitude, some of you beyond prayer, you need this one thing. Are you listening? Let me see your eyes. You need sleep. <laughs> I thought I would get a lot of amens there. You, you need sleep. Listen, I was looking at a, um, a research study. It suggested that 90 to 60% of college students are sleep deprived. Watch this. I'm just going to poll the group. How, how many of you last night slept eight hours? Count them on one hand. Count them a few of you. Look, you're, you're going to heaven. You're going to heaven. Really smart students. You, re you represent the best of us, all right? How many of you got six hours last night? Okay, anybody less than four? Okay, okay. We're, we're, we're going straight to the counseling center, all right? I'm just teasing. Hey, by the way, we are grateful for 
our, our counseling center team, they have been doing amazing work over the past couple of years, walking with students, walking with their families. Also, our campus pastors have just been such a resource to our community. Can we just pause right there and just give them a round of applause and thank them for their, their ministry? It's good. Listen, I kid you not, for many of you, probably the, the biggest spiritual step that you can take in the immediate is to go to your room and go to sleep. Take a nap. Don't skip class. See, some of you almost got, he gave, Dr. K gave me permission. He, he endorsed it. No, you know, go to class and please don't sleep in class, right? But, <laughs> but literally carve out times for rest. Listen, you can not offer your best contribution and be used by the Lord in an optimal way if you're not rested. You got to steward your temple. It's important. You got to do it. And we know how we are when we're sleepless. We're irritable. Somebody calls, we literally just, I'm trying to talk to them, get on my nerves. <laughs> keep calling me so much ghosting people walking on the pla on the the walkway people say good morning like oh don't give me that <laughs> what's so good about it All right it changes our aura and our spirit so it's so important for us to sleep and to rest and to rest we need it we need. Can I get can I get an amen from the student body? Amen. All right. So go back to the Garden of Gethsemane. I don't know what your garden is, but I would say today as a practical step, identify that chill place or time for you. And during that time, listen, I know I'm going on a little long. Listen, I'm going to need that 1120. I'm going to need it. I need it. Listen. While you're resting, be intentional not to think about circumstances, but direct your mind on the Lord and think about every, like literally count every blessing. I don't care how minute, how small it is in your mind, just start rattling them off one. God, thank you for loving me. God, thank you for sending your son so that I can be redeemed. God, thank you for reserving a home in heaven. Excuse me, a mansion in heaven. God, thank you for blessing me with good friends and an okay one. God, thank you for blessing me to be a part of this community. And this is what I say. God, thank you for my mama who prayed for me when I needed it. God, God, thank you for my father. Thank you for my wife of 23 years. Oh, thank you, Lord. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't have to do the wife part and all that. All right? And some of you, actually, that may be a digression for you. Start thinking about Michael B. Jordan and other people. No, keep it focused. Keep it on the Lord. Keep it on the Lord. But literally, I'm serious, B., be intentional, blessing after blessing after blessing. And before you know it, you're focusing on God's graciousness. You find yourself in a space of gratitude and it changes your perspective. Right? It changes the trajectory of your day. To be honest with you, I could just speak from this one point, but I have two more points that I've got to share with you. Let's go back to the Garden of Gethsemane. All right, number two, let's go back to the table. So in the Gospels, we see these countless um, instances where Jesus shares meals with different people from a variety of backgrounds. Yes, moments of solitude are critical, but guess what? God made us as relational beings. We are really called to be within the context of community. And actually, we cannot optimize our influence and all that God has designed us to be if it's not within the context of relationship. 
That's the way that God oriented us. That is the order. Now, I understand that some of you, when you hear this, you're like, oh, my. If you're introverted, you may be thinking, ah, you know, I like relationships, but it's always just starting. No worries. Okay. What, what I always encourage, you know, students that I mentor who are introverted, I say, hey, just focus on that one person that you can go deep with. In, in, individuals who are introverted and introspective, they really cultivate deep, meaningful, long-lasting relationships. Do we have any introverts in the space? Yes, indeed. Look, at, look you don't even want to... <laughs> keep going, Dr. K. Keep going with those compliments. Yes, that's who you are. That is a gift. That's the way that God wired you. Use that as a strength in your relationships, whether that's a small group or your discipleship group, right? Or if you're an RA on your floor, or even if you're not an RA, you're a person of influence, right? You're a more seasoned student. Go to the person next door and cultivate a meaningful relationship. Don't make it weird. Don't just, hi. Over, over, close the door like what, what is she doing what is he doing you know so have a plan in mind now some of you are extroverted you're gre gregarious right God has blessed you with that personality I see some of you out here on um what what, what is this this is cougar walk thank you I see I always think of Wallace Way and cougar I see you on cougar walk just talking to everybody it's like you got a superpower. You, you, you don't meet strangers, people buying your coffee and your, your food, right? Don't be manipulative with that. Okay, steward it, steward it well. But this is, the, this is the, the caveat that I would like to share with those of you who have that gifting. Be intentional about going deep with others. All right? And this is for me because I'm very extra. I like to talk to as many people in a space as possible. But I have to be intentional to say, okay, I wanna go deep with at least a few people. Because this is the truth of the matter. When we're at the table, it provides an opportunity for us to get to know a person. And when we know them, we love them. I've, I've heard this, say, hey, love everybody. And it's important for us to live with that mantra at heart. But if you think about it, Love is the outcome of getting to know. So I, I want you to be thinking on two questions. One, why is the table important? I want you to be thinking about that. Like who are the people, also who are the people at your table? Who are you inviting? There are some people that you know you have a good relationship, continue to go deep in your relationships with them. Allow that to be an expression of love and truth, but also be thinking about new opportunities, potentially people that you've never interacted with before, perhaps a person who comes from a different background than you do, ethnically, culturally, socioeconomically, right? And we can go on and on. Think of ways that you can connect. And there are some organic ways for you to do that. You rub elbows with peers in the classroom. For those of you who are staying in our residence halls, there are people that you literally walk by multiple times during the week. Seize it as an opportunity to go deep. Invite them to the table. That's what Jesus did. Yeah, Jesus had Jews and Gentiles and the writers even noted individuals who were designated as sinners at the table with them, just tearing up the barbecue and the ribs. I like it. I added the barbecue and rib part. Okay. The, the point that I'm making is invite those to the table. You got to connect. You know, one... Um, historical event that I love that's here at APU that's sponsored by SGA is called The Table, right? It's coming up, I think, on the 24th, and it's a great opportunity for people to sit at the table, interact with individuals that we probably wouldn't even cross paths with, start to cultivate relationships for God's glory. I would love for you to, 
to do that. All right, last thing. I got three minutes. Let's go back. Let's go back to the cross. To the cross. In a society like ours, in a time like ours, it's very easy to become preoccupied with challenges and circumstances and what's popular and what's cool. But as Christ followers, I think all of us, we understand that the purpose of our lives is to elevate the glory of the Lord. And every day we need to remind ourselves that the life that's been given to me, the strengths that have been deposited within me, the wealth, the privilege that God has given to me, it's not for my selfish gain. It's not to look cool. It's not to win over the approval of others. But it's to glorify God. It's not about me. Even though God uses me as, as, a, as a vessel, man, can you imagine if this entire campus was devoted to the notion that God must receive the glory in everything that I say, everything that I do, every way that I interact? with my faculty and staff and students and community, can you imagine how grand of an impact we will have, not just in the city of Azusa, but in Southern California and broadly and even around the globe? Everybody shout, to God be the glory. Be the glory. That's what we want. That's what we want. I know we all face the temptation of getting in our feelings getting in our thoughts, becoming preoccupied with what we want. But can you imagine if collectively we were resolved about, I want to be used by God. I want to be at the foot of the cross with Mary, with Mary's sister, with Mary Magdalene. When everybody else left, while Jesus hung on the cross, they dispersed, they joked at Jesus, could save everybody, but couldn't even save himself. But those women, I got to say it during Women's History Month too, those women, I know we can talk about Mother Teresa and Maya Angelou and other people, we celebrate them, but what about those women who remained devoted and at the foot of the cross. And even seeing Jesus hang there, it amplified their conviction and their discipleship to serve the Lord. Man, they are our models. Can I get an amen from the student body? Let's just give God praise. Let's give God praise. Come on. Come on. Come on, let's do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. God, we thank you so much for the way that you enrich us from your word. We are blessed by your son. God, I pray that you impress on our incredible students who you've gifted, whose lives are saturated with purpose. God, I pray that you challenge them to carve out moments of solitude, to have meaningful time with you, to be reminded of their calling, the way that you've blessed them. God, I pray that you give them the compelling desire to bring students, especially students who are at the fringe or who are at the margins, to the table. That they use their giftings to express love, to communicate truth. And God, I pray that all of this is on the premise of their understanding of your son's sacrifice on the cross. God, we don't forget it. We're convicted by it. We're moved by 
his sacrifice. And Father, we are committed to follow as disciples. We pray that you and only you will be glorified across this institution. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Blessings to you. Thanks so much. Thank you.